Windows 11 requires a TPM module version 2.0 or newer, as many of you found out the hard way. This can be a problem when you're trying to upgrade older workstations, but, you know, workstations get old, they kind of meant to be replaced, that's probably not such a big deal. What can be a big deal is what happens when your virtual infrastructure is running a server that doesn't come with TPM. If you want to do VDI or you want to create a laboratory environment, some kind of staging environment for your imaging, this lack of TPM can be very challenging. Fortunately, Proxmox show, offers us a solution to this without having to buy a TPM module. So we'll talk about that next. Welcome to Tech Topics brought to you by CyberVenger. We help keep small businesses stay protected and compliant with cutting-edge cybersecurity and IT solutions. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a virtual machine running on Proxmox running on a node that actually doesn't even have a TPM module. If you recall, of course, you need TPM in order to load Windows 11 on things. So if you got some old hardware, this could be a, um, a cheap trick to get Windows 11 running. You just run it as a guest. Now, that doesn't work too well for workstations. It's a little impractical. But if you want to do a lab with an older piece of equipment, you don't have to throw away your old servers. You can run Windows 11 guests on if you're running Proxmox. I tell you, folks, I'm starting to really love Proxmox. It's, uh, it's really darn cool. So we take a look at this here. We've got our Windows 11 guest that I already created and for my test here just to make sure it worked. We're going to build a new one. So we're going to create our VM. I'm going to call it uh, W11 Test 2. And uh, I'll leave all the rest of this here. Next. Okay, so we want to change our kernel, or uh, our type, to Windows. And you see here it's got 11, and Windows 22, and Windows 25. Uh, I like to do this here. Add additional drive drivers, because you're going to need... What it does is create a second CD-ROM, so you have a way to load drivers during the install. And if you download this separately online and then upload it to your store, you can load your Vertio Win CD driver, the uh, drivers. That's basically first for your network and your SCSI drivers. Never has play with Proxmox. Sometimes you go to install a Windows system on there and you can't see the disk because it doesn't have a driver. And then here is my Windows 11 DVD. Okay, that's set. And now we got to make sure we have. Q35 is our type. If you want to run the old i44FX, I don't think it includes the TPM. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure if you need QEM, QEMU agent, but what the heck, when I put that option on there. Here it is. So add TPM. It's going to want to know where you're storing your TPM. So it just needs a, a shared storage there, and we have that. And the idea is that you can move it from any host and still have access to the virtual TPM. Um, our EFI storage need to store the same thing. There we go. I've got shared storage on my network. If I didn't have a network, if it's just a single host, or if I didn't have a cluster, I should say, um, then you can use local storage, I think. Um, and there we are. Those are our settings there. Next. Of course, there are disks. Uh, 127 seems like a good <clears throat> default size. Uh, left it to SCSI. We could change it to something else. There's other options here, but the old SCSI seems to work well. Next, CPU. Now, you can always change it later, but when you're installing, I recommend giving yourself plenty of cores. The installer is a little demanding of the CPU. Um, you can play with the different CPI, CPU types, what it's going to pretend it is, what it's going to emulate, and all that stuff. Um, I just leave it with the default. It also seems to work fairly well. I, I had pretty decent performance there. Uh, maybe not so much during the installation, but <laughs> uh, overall. And then memory, again, give yourself plenty of memory. Give yourself 16 gigs <clears throat> if, you've, if, if you can afford it. <clears throat> Our network, I believe, is default. And there we go. Okay, so now we have our Windows 11 test. We're going to go to our console here. And we're going to start it. Maximize our console. And away we boot. I gotta make sure I hit the thing in time. Yeah, we're spinning. All right, so here's our Windows 11 installer. Usually you can get this far without a TPM. 
Yeah, it's all from scratch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we agree that everything's going to be deleted. Yeah, not so much demoing uh, Windows 11 install as I am demoing <coughs> the TPM bypass uh, using Proxbox. Well, not bypass, it's more like virtual TPM. This Windows 11 box is going to think that it has a TPM module on it. You'll see that shortly. Yeah, checking for disks, checking for... There we go. Normally it bombs by here. Now, we don't have our, our uh, disk here. We can fix that. Load a driver. And browse to our uh, video disk here. And I think... The default is under on to AMD 64. Leave. Yep, there we go. Red Hat, Vertio, SCSI, Passive Controller. Select that puppy. And then install. Ah, see, now it sees our disks. And then next, little panel creating the partition, all that stuff for you. Right? Yeah. Okay, and install. Look at that. And there is no physical TPM on this system. <clears throat> I'm using um, an old um, Nutanix hardware. It's uh, basically an Asus build. It's one of those uh, blade servers. I think it's, uh, what is it? It's an NX1165 G5, I think is what the hardware I'm using. But it does not have a TPM built into it. And uh, what you saw in the options, the QE. Q -E MU, which is part of uh, Proxmox, you have the option to build virtual TPMs. And you could do it right there on the guest as you're installing, uh, as you're creating it right there. So we'll let this puppy cook, and then um, we'll resume our video. Well, we're halfway through. It, uh, this is a bit of a time-consuming process. Um, okay, there you go, just... Finish is now rebooting. Any second, I should start doing the uh, rest of the window setup, the post reboot stuff. Oh, yeah, it's installing updates as we're installing the software. Thanks, Windows 11. I'll make this demo take a little longer. In fact, I think I'm going to pause again while it does that. Okay, updates installed, and it's rebooting again. Skipping around a bit here for brevity's sake, so the video doesn't go ramble on uselessly. In fact, I think I'm going to pause again for a minute here. Oh, look at that. More updating. Yay. Uh, it's turning into a Windows 11 is annoying video. Now, I'm going to pause this again. All right, here we go. We're getting there. We're booting. And I forgot to hit play, uh, record again after uh, the first splash screen. But trust me, this is this is pretty much where we're at here. Um, install driver. This is the next step. And we just show it our uh, video drive there. It's looking for new drivers. Okay, so you see it found our network card already. That's good. Now we can keep doing stuff. Now we can hit continue, or hit next, I should say. But I'm going to let it search for extra drivers for a few minutes. I'll uh, pause the video while that happens. Okay, it's been about five minutes of this. Um, I don't know why it's still looking for drivers, but we don't actually need to install all the drivers. We can do that later. So we're going to go ahead and hit next and just skip this. Okay, well, it finished, but something went wrong. So we're going to have to skip for now. Uh, my previous test did not have something go wrong, so I'm not entirely sure what that was. But uh, we'll see. I'll let it cook through and correct any issues that come up. Okay, well, it didn't seem to complain too much. We're going to name our dev device here. 11 test 2. And next. Just another moment. 
Oh, this is shocking. It's rebooting again. All right, I'm going to set up for uh, work. Next. Not a fan of signing the Microsoft, although there is an advantage in that it will update your private key, your um, BitLocker encryption key. But I'm going to join a domain instead and manage that myself. Uh, I'm just a user in my lab. Oh, there we go. Call me Lab. That's my username. And then security questions. Okay, I skipped the skipped recording for the video for the uh, security questions. All right, and all these I usually like to turn everything off as a matter of privacy. It's all stuff that tracks what you do, and I just don't see a lot of value in that. But yeah, you can figure out how you want. No, oh, we're checking for Windows updates again. Oh, yay. Whilst I appreciate Microsoft pushing to have updated things uh, right out of the get-go, sometimes you just need to get the build done. And uh, this is unnecessary time. I, I will tell you, folks, I've pressed pause and record <laughs> over and over throughout this video. Uh, what you see on your end is a whole lot faster than this uh, is taking. Um, now, you will see... Uh, in another video, we're going to talk about how to image Windows 11 to try and speed up deployment because this manual install is kind of painful. It's going to do some downloading of our Windows updates again. In our previous uh, test before I did this video, this process took a long while as well. Yeah, it says this could take a while. They're, they're not lying. <laughs> so once again, I'm going to pause the video give you guys a break from it. All right, we're almost done downloading. She starts installing the updates after that. And uh, here we are installing. Hey, we're rebooting again. Oh, and we're updating again. Yay. After another reboot. Here we go again. Oh, and after our reboot, look, it's updating again. Shocking. Hey, look at that. Only like uh, a million reboots later, we're done. Okay, so we're going to log in here real quick. Just to show you that we're uh, completely lit up on our Proxmox box. There's lab. Here is my lab password. And our launching to the desktop for the first time. All right. There we are. So there you have it. Load up a Windows 11 box that does not physically have a TPM under Proxmox and creating a virtual TPM and load it all the way to desktop. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. We walked through creating a virtual machine definition in Proxmox that included the TPM settings to produce a TPM online or virtually. And then we loaded our Windows operating system rather tediously. <laughs> but we loaded our Windows operating system and Windows 11 did detect the TPM properly and said nope, I had no problems with it. We even walked you through how to use Proxmox 
drivers. I had to add an extra driver so that you could see our SCSI drives and things like that. And we completed the install, and there it is. It works. So hopefully that helps some of you out there in if you're building a lab or if you're building a VDI environment similar to that. You could produce a TPM module virtually for your Windows 11 without actually physically having to have a TPM module. And you can do this, I think, in other hypervisors as well. I know VMware's got a way to do that uh, if you have vSphere anyway. I don't know about Hyper-V and some of the other ones out there. But at least we could do this with Proxmox for free. And uh, hopefully that helps some of you out with your labs. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has provided valuable information to you. Be sure to share this video with other small business owners to spread the word about the importance of cybersecurity. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want more information about cybersecurity visit us at www.cybervenger.com.